Beginning around 100,000 years ago in Africa, later in other places, we began seeing the earliest evidence of late Stone Age or Upper Paleolithic stone tools. Now once again, the definitions we use to establish these different boundaries are somewhat vague. But by and large, the kinds of transitions we see with the Upper Paleolithic is a movement again to a more diverse range of tool types and tool types that require more precision to make. You recall that in the Middle Stone Age, we began to see the proliferation of things like these blades, knocked off of a prepared core. By the Upper Paleolithic, we see similar productions, but instead of large blades, we begin to see bladelets, very small tools and otherwise, small tools that require extreme precision in terms of the production of them. As a matter of fact, at some Upper Paleolithic or Late Stone Age sites, we actually see that the core materials themselves used to make them require extensive preparation before they can be used. And not the kind of preparation we saw in the Middle Paleolithic with actually knocking off part of the core to make the right kind of structure to knock off the tools, but more extensive preparation. There's raw material from the South African site of Pinnacle Point that in order to have the flaking properties necessary to produce these kinds of bladelets, the rock itself had to be slowly cooked for as much as 36 hours in order to change the physical material properties of the stone itself to make it capable of producing these kinds of fine precision flakes. So there was extensive use, extensive knowledge of specific material properties by the late Pleistocene, by these upper Paleolithic and late Paleolithic industries. Now you might wonder, what's a Paleolithic hominin going to do with a little tiny bladelet like this? What function could this object have? And what we think these bladelets were used for was that they weren't standalone tools, but rather parts of composite tools, hafted onto wooden structures or bases that allowed them to become complex compound cutting instruments, things that would have had a high functionality to them. The other thing that happens in the late Pleistocene is the beginning of stylistic tools, points in other words that show characteristic stylistic differences between regional populations stylistic differences that appear to be maintained through active cultural forces as a means of identifying and designating where certain kinds of tools were constructed. Who was the maker of this tool? How did they differ from other populations? The final thing we begin seeing in the Late Stone Age or Upper Paleolithic is an increasing intensity of symbolic artifacts. We begin seeing by the final end of the Late Stone Age the beginnings of rock art as well actual ornamental drawings and illustrations of objects of the environment, and in very complex, dramatic ways. In cave sites like Lascaux in southern France, coming right at the end of the Upper Paleolithic, we begin seeing a whole abundance of incredibly rich, symbolic, and really fascinating cave art. So the Late Stone Age, the Upper Paleolithic, sees a continuation of many of the trends we've already seen. Increased intensification, a diverse range of tool types, tool types for more specific purposes, more intensive preparation of those tools prior to their production. So all of this is continuing the trends we've seen so far. Only you might notice that these intensification, this trend towards greater complexity, is occurring on a more rapid scale. The Ashleyan stone tool industry existed for a million years. The Middle Paleolithic stone tool industries persisted for 200, 250,000 years. The Upper Paleolithic industry goes from basic Upper Paleolithic to the kind of advanced symbolic drawings at Lascaux in a span of 30,000 years. So we're beginning to see not just an increase in the overall cognitive complexity, the increase in the intensity of production, but an acceleration in the scale at which that's happening. Human populations are evolving faster. Their cultural capabilities of producing technology to affect the environment are occurring on a more rapid pace. So the Upper Paleolithic gives rise to what we usually think of as more modern behaviors. Although this modernity again is something that stretches back even further in the past than the Upper Paleolithic. It's just we begin seeing it culminate in a real flourishing of technologies by the end of the Upper Paleolithic.